One giant leap. Oh, too early. <laughs> for mankind. <laughs> Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mary and today I'm watching a movie called Apollo 13. This has Tom Hanks in it, it has Kevin Bacon. I'm really excited for this one because I know it is based on a true story. And outside of knowing about Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, I really don't know much about American space history. We weren't really taught it in Australian schools other than the Neil Armstrong space story. One step for man, one giant step for mankind or is it one giant leap for man it's pro I'm, see i'm probably getting the quote wrong too but i am really keen to know this story i think it'll teach me a lot about this part of history that i didn't learn about and you guys know that i love a good space movie before we jump into this i want to remind you guys about the uncut version that is going to be over on patreon the link for that is in the description bar and in the pinned comments down below you just need a copy of the film so that you can watch it along with me there'll be a timer i can be on one screen and the movie can be on another screen screen down below in the description bar and in the pinned comments you can also find all of my social media handles instagram twitter twitch discord tiktok facebook as well as my two other channels my gaming channel and my vlog channel so guys with all of that said let's jump into apollo 13. 9 p.m eastern daylight time now the important thing when you're penetrating the lunar module <laughs> is your attitude and your relative speed kevin bacon it's me here in the command module and this is you that looks like Miley Cyrus he's talking to, but I know it's not. Is that true? Absolutely. And, and, and Tracy, I'll tell you, when you feel that thing slide in, everything's clicking. It's like no other feeling. Oh my gosh, the innuendo. This is the last champagne in the city of Houston. Also, I take back what I said. She definitely doesn't look like Miley Cyrus. Hey, kids! Wow, check out the old TV. It's also on the floor. Armstrong is on the moon. Yeah, Neil Armstrong, 38 year old American. 38. Wow. I actually didn't know he was that age. 20th, 1969. That's one small step for man. One giant leap. Oh, I'm too early. <laughs> for mankind. <laughs> so cool. Very famous quote. Very well known. The moon is so beautiful. I've always considered myself a Selena file. Lover of the moon. Looking up at us. Isn't that something? I bet Jenny Armstrong doesn't get a wink of sleep tonight. Right? That's Apollo true. 8, we were so close. Just 60 nautical miles down. And... Could have been him. It was like I could just step out and walk on the face of it. I'm going to go back there. His wife's like, uh... Where's my mountain? <laughs> it's okay. You see the, the where the shadow crosses the... The white area there, that's the Sea of Tranquility. Oh, they should have a telescope in their house. That'd be cool. She could like look out when he's um away from if home. Christopher Columbus had come back from the New World and no one returned in his footsteps. Attention all personnel, clear level three. So that's, I guess that's what it was all about. Just beat the Russians. How do you go to the bathroom in space? <laughs> Cranking down the window and looking for a gas station, which is... <laughs> and, uh, there might be a slight change in destination. Maybe say the moon. <gasps> you know, We've all been bumped up to the prime crew of Apollo 13. Straight to the head of the line in the Frau Mora Highlands. She's like happy, but also damn. You're moving up six months? Dad, can I please wear this? Sure. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. <laughs> I don't see anything wrong with it, but this is the 60s, so. Naturally, it's 13. Why 13? It comes after 12, huh? <laughs> yeah, but it's also an unlucky number. Wait a minute. Uh, I lost something here. I can't translate up. Houston, we are. Houston. Houston. You want to just back off and take another run at this? No, no I got it. Do you I know, it. when I was younger, I was like, who is Houston? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like, oh, Houston, Texas. Ha, that's it. Sweet move, Ken. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Gentlemen, that is the way we do that. Oh, man, that woke me up. I'm glad they're having a lot of simulation testing here because at least they'll be somewhat prepared. Yeah, I know, but my rate of turn is still a little too slow there. I really think we should work it again. Well, let's get it right. Yeah, let's get it okay, perfect. Set it up again, I agree. Can't be too prepared because you're going into space. 
panic. Oh my god. Uh, okay, this is a nightmare. This is his dream. It's gotta be. Yep. <laughs> that is so scary. Oh, it was her nightmare. Fall down on your... 19... Oh, we're in the 70s now. Three weeks prior to launch. Well, I'll tell you something about that fire. A lot of things went wrong. They couldn't get it open when they needed to get out. Oh. oh. And, uh, well, a lot of things went wrong in that fire. So answer his question. Could that happen again? It's not a problem anymore. Okay. If you say so. She's stressed. She doesn't believe it. She's, she, as an adult, she's like, that. something like that could happen again, though. I'm thinking about not going to the launch. Huh. Really? Marilyn, we've had these kids for a while now. <laughs> They've never kept you from coming to the other launch. Yes, but now we have your mother. She's just had this oh. stroke. Oh, wow. That's a bad look if she doesn't go. He's very sad about that. Just feels unsupported. Jim, if you hold out for Ken, you will not be on Apollo 13. It's your decision. Oh, my God. His wife's not going to be happy with that. Yes, sir. Uh, I understand. Thank you, sir. Oh, man. He doesn't seem too happy about the news. Oh, okay. My bad. <laughs> he just needed a moment. Yeah, I'm worried. Medical guys. I had a feeling when they started doing all the blood tests. I mean, I know it's their ass if I get sick up there, but I mean, Jesus! Poor dude. Feel bad for him. Swigert, he'll he'll be fine. He's uh, he's strong. It'll be a hell of a mission, one for the books. This was my call. Even more awkward. <laughs> Charbroiled. It's not good. So what happened? Came in too steep. We're dead. No shit. <laughs> like literally one button one thing that could go wrong everybody's dead i know that i am happy that i didn't choose that kind of profession <laughs> well we have two days we'll be ready let's do it again do it again two days of practice is that enough time i don't know i don't think so well hey that looks like marilyn lovell it can't be she's not coming to the launch i heard it was gonna be a hell of a show <laughs> so who told you that some guy i know <laughs> Cute. Can't live without me. Don't say that. Okay, folks. Let's say Don't put it that way. You hear about Ken? Yeah. I'm worried. I'm worried. Is this the last time they'll see each other? <gasps> oh, dude. That's a bad omen. Oh, my gosh. Oh, God. That's so bad. <gasps> Why would you shower with your ring on? Oh no. Oh, how scary. It's all happening. I really, really hope nothing goes wrong, but I don't think so. Oh man, poor dude. He's like, well, I still don't have the measles. <laughs> but yeah, he could get it up there. Oh my gosh, it's just such a build up. We are go for launch. T minus 15, 14, 10, 10 9, 9, 8, 3, 2, 1. Here we go, guys. Holy crap. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That is epic. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh. Must be so emotional for the women. Roll complete. We are pitching. I don't think I've ever seen a launch. But maybe I have. Maybe I have. But definitely not in a movie. Not like this. Holy crap. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I wonder how much adrenaline you would have inside that ship right now. <gasps> wow. The music's so... I don't know, try it. Oh, just stopped. That, now the music's worrying me. Looks like it's mostly good. 13 stand for staging. Oh. <laughs> it's been 12 minutes and 34 seconds? What? I can't believe it took him 12 minutes and 30 something seconds to get up into space already. 
That's freaking wild. Remember, if you're proud, happy, and thrilled. <laughs> How are you feeling? We're very proud and very happy when we're thrilled. <laughs> Verbatim. <laughs> <sighs> Gonna go ahead and get set for transposition and docking. Roger that, Jack. Oh, yuck! Get a grip! Get a. Oh! Ew! Okay. It's going everywhere! It's Fire disgusting! Roger that. Okay, we're ready for CSM separation. Well, at least okay, they don't have CSI, so vomit on their faces. Okay, Swagger, command module pilot. She's all yours. Wouldn't they take some sort of anti vomiting pill? 10 feet. Come on. Pressure's on. Oh, it's in. It's in. That's it. Hell yeah. Jack and I will eat. Hey, I'm hungry. Eat? Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Eat the ass out of a dead rhinoceros. Unnecessary visual. Here it comes. Uh, Constellation Urion. Uh, ew! <laughs> what the heck? Oh, my gosh. I never thought about that. So, uh, hit it there, Freddo. Hello, world. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> Kids are so cute. Hey, Marilyn. Where's their broadcast? Oh, I dream of Jeannie. <gasps> Marilyn said we made going to the moon about as exciting as taking a trip to Pittsburgh. What? My son's supposed to be on. He's in outer space. Oh, that's so sad. That's so stupid. Oh, oh. What? The? Oh, I thought it was P for a second. I was like, what are you guys doing? Do they know they're not in the air? They'll tell them when they get back. Oh, that's so sad. 1040 return of him. I meant to do it today, but that's no joke. They'll jump on him. <laughs> no lie. No lie. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm suddenly getting worried. Oh, with good reason. Oh my god. Oh! Oh! Uh, this is bad. An oxygen tank just blew. It would have been fine if... Kevin Bacon wasn't told to do Houston. that. Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> the classic line. Oh, there's another master alarm, Houston. I'm checking a quad. Christ, there was no repress valve. Maybe it's what can they do from, from back at the base? Oh my god. This is so unlucky. I knew they shouldn't have gone out on the 13th. We got a wicked shimmy up oh here. Oh my god. Oh, look, I'm GNC. These guys are talking about bangs and We keep flooding with gimbal lock. we need a confirmation. Oh my gosh. This is absolute chaos. Cryo pressure. Cryo. Suit compressor. What don't we have? I don't know. I would put my helmet back on. Command module computer. And O2 flow high. Well, I don't I don't know. Maybe this is he figuring it out? Has he realized? I can see it outside of window one right now. It's definitely uh Gas and oxygen. It's got to be the oxygen. Mm-hmm. Now it's like it's clicking in Kevin Bacon's head. It's like, mm, well, I did click something earlier. Does that mean they have to abort mission? We're going to keep hitting the edge of that dead man. Take a look at the O2 on number one. 200 pounds and falling. Oh, my God. Can we review our status here, Si? Let's look at this thing from the... This uh, is very, very, very bad. Yes. What have we got on a spacecraft that's good? <laughs> What's working in there? I'll get back to you, Jane. We're not going to have power much longer. Oh, fudge. Oh, my God. That's so stressful. Like, literally, you would be asking yourself if you're even going to survive. Flight. Yeah, go, we come. You close them, you can't open them again. You can't land on the moon with one healthy fuel cell. They're not going to land. The Odyssey is dying. From my chair here, this is the last option. you got to send them back. Yeah, Jim, uh... We think that closing the react valves may stop the leak. But, but, but then we won't get to go to space. But, 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 but then you get to live. Sorry, I mean the moon. The moon, the moon, the moon. We just lost the moon. You lost the moon, but you have your lives. I bet the other guy that was left behind... Fredo, shut those down. ...stoked that <laughs> he didn't go now. Let's see what this does. Oh, that's so scary. Come on. Oh, my gosh. Oh, God. 
Uh, Houston, O2 uh, on one is still falling. It's still falling, man. 15 minutes of oxygen, and that's it. The command module will be dead. 15 okay. minutes? Okay, okay, Houston, I've completed the steps on page 15. Now I'm ready to power down the computer. Gonna need your gimbal angles, Jack, before you shut down the computer. Jack, Jack. I keep calling him Kevin Bacon. <laughs> now, Jack, we need to proceed with steps 12 through 17. Quickly. Stressful maths calculations. Oh my gosh, what's wrong with the pen? Okay, the roll cal angle is minus two. Oh my lord. Such quick work. Time is literally everything right now. That's why you have to be really good at maths when you're out in space. Speaking of girl watching things, you know that our first bachelor astronaut is on his way to the moon? Is it Swigert? Bachelor? Oh yeah. Jack Swigert. I think he's sort of foolishly optimistic, though, taking nylons and Hershey bars to the moon. Anyway. <laughs> okay, don't joke about that. They're struggling right now. Science editor Special Joel report. Clark. And astronauts Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swigert are making their way through the... That's definitely the news. Oh, no. Imagine being the wife. And getting the astronauts safely back to Earth. Recapping what has happened now. The Apollo 13 astronauts... In case you didn't hear. Then it's only by a very narrow margin mm. that we're going to get Lovell, Hayes, Back alive. By a very low margin. I would literally never let my husband go out to space after this. <laughs> Something broke on your daddy's spaceship, and he's gonna have to turn around before he even gets to the moon. Poor kid, look at his face. The door? <laughs> no, it wasn't the door. This is Odyssey, signing off. The power's off, the lights are off, no comms. All you have is each other. Just a matter of when. He feels really guilty. I mean, we've got to do a direct abort. I agree. I agree. We designed the limb to land on the moon. Mm. Not fire the engine out there for course correction. Well, unfortunately, we're not landing on the moon, are we? Yep. Everybody just get used to that. I don't think they're that good. We are not losing those men. At least they can agree on that. What a stressful day at NASA. From you again at acquisition of signal. There's the moon. You want to look? Oh, look at this. It's pretty sad, but at least they get a close look. Where is that 30 seconds till loss of signal? Poor woman. You and Buzz's old neighborhood. <laughs> Coming up on Mount Maryland. Jim, you got to take a look at this. Mount Maryland. Jack's got the most guiltiest face I've ever seen. She's just sick with worry. And I don't blame her. Look, it's Frau Morrow. Frau Morrow. I can see our landing site. Wow. Where they were supposed to land. It's beautiful. It's Mary and Broom to the north. I love that they just know everything about the moon. Like, I, I love the moon, but I just, I don't need these details. Oh. You can dream. Just wasn't meant to happen. Look at him running around in his fantasy. I wonder if those marks would be there forever. So cool. And there's Earth. So awesome. Miss Houston, we're reading your telemetry. It's good to see you again. Yeah, I wish they'd just hurry up. Get back to Earth. It's stressing the wife out so much. Gentlemen, what are your intentions? I'd like to go home. That brings them to about there. Oh. Power is everything. What do you mean? We gotta turn everything off. Now. They're not gonna make it to re-entry. What do you mean? Don't say that. At that rate, in 16 hours, the batteries are dead, not 45. And so is the crew. We gotta get them down to 12 amps. 12 amps. You can turn off the radar, <gasps> the cabin heater, instrument displays, the guy computer, they gonna, the whole smack. What are they gonna do? The more time we talk down here, the more juice they waste up there. I've been looking at the data for the past hour. That's the deal? That's the deal. Oh my gosh, this is dire. Okay, John. And then we finish the burn, we'll power down the limb. All right. They're going to be so cold. And brewing with the carbon dioxide. We had a CO2 filter problem on the lunar mine. Another problem? Uh, oh, man. I'm stressed. Hayes family lives in El Lago, Texas. The wife, Mary, is from Biloxi, Mississippi. When Fred Hayes was growing up in Biloxi. Oh, wow. Well, they're like, they're kind of like talking about them as though they're already dead. <laughs> I thought they didn't care about this mission. They didn't even run Jim's show. They, they care now. If they have a problem with that, they can take it up with my husband. He'll be home Aww. on Friday. Oh, poor Marilyn. She's holding on to that faith, that optimism. But she's scared. Oh, my God. The Oh, it's cold. Day five. 
I'd be wearing gloves. I'd be holding someone. Everyone should be holding each other at this point. Oh, touch the moon for us. I love you, Mary. It's a nice one, Mary. You don't look too good, Fredo. Got some aspirin in the medical I took some. Kid. Jim, I'm all right. Catching the cold. It was an accident. Mary getting pregnant. That has a tendency to happen. <laughs> I wonder if it's a boy or a girl. I mean, you'll find out, I'm sure. You'll find out soon enough. Exactly. Gotta have faith, the faith, the faith. He's looking at these photos as though he's already dead too. It hurts when I urinate. I'm drinking my ration the same as you. I think old Swagger gave me the clap. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't put it past him. We're never going to get back. What are you talking about? How'd you figure that? I can add. <laughs> And what if they had made a mistake, all right? And there was no way to reverse it. Do you think they would tell us? Ow! <laughs> Damn it! Hey! Shit! They're working on it, though. They haven't had any that's sleep. The we... That's because that's the only thing we got left, Jack. Now, what are you saying, Fred? Oh, I think you know what I'm saying. Now, wait a minute. Let's play the blame I'm game. Where is this, Houston? Oh. Are we on Vox? No, we're not on Vox. Yeah, Houston, this is Aquarius. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, yeah, Houston, we were just looking at that. Our CO2 measurement has jumped four notches in the last oh, hour. God. Maybe I should just hold my breath. <laughs> <laughs> what if they conspired against one of them? Would it save the two of them's lives? If there's one less person, wouldn't that mean less oxygen is being used? So maybe that's why the other guy was feeling sick because he was getting CO2 poisoned. The guy that's pee's hurting. All right, hold on. He's Astronauts appear to have enough oxygen to keep them oh, alive. Good. One thing they have too much of yep. is carbon dioxide. They're being poisoned. Breath, the three men expel more of the poisonous gas oh. into the module cockpit, and the scrubbers intended to keep the atmosphere breathable are quickly becoming. Sad. Everything is going wrong. Like literally everything. Any rescue system, the space agency, has long since calculated. Any since uh, oh. any rescue system, the space agency calculated. She got, yeah, she gonna turn it off. I don't blame ya. One sock. Once you have the sock in place, we're gonna want you to. Uh, <laughs> this is so funny. Just bring normal fellas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're still holding close to 15. Come on. Oh. Oh, yes. Houston, the CO2 level has dropped to nine, and it is still falling. Great. <laughs> Great. What a relief. One win, so many L's, one W. Aww. And it's Aww. a little bit dangerous. Aww. Don't you worry, honey. If they could get a washing machine to fly, my Jimmy could land it. <laughs> it's a lot of faith. Love this mom. Oh, when that little girl started crying though, I was like, oh, I gotta fight back tears, man. I gotta fight back tears. Oh my god, it's getting icy. Oh god. This is so dire. You'll be happy to hear that we contacted President Nixon. Oh, and right. He's going to grant you an extension on your income tax. <laughs> Roger that, Houston. <laughs> That's wonderful news. Wonderful no, news, no. indeed. I am sick and tired of the entire Western world knowing how my kidneys <laughs> are functioning. <laughs> right? Oh, sh. Flight at just lost level. Uh, you probably think he's dead. I'm not wearing my biomed sensors, Houston. YOLO. <laughs> okay, Jim. Copy that. Can't force you to do it. <laughs> They're all like, yep, we're going to take it off too. There's nothing you can do about it. Flight, now I'm losing all three of them. It's just a little medical mutiny, Doc. Ex sure the guys are still with us. Medical it's mutiny, indeed. Slide, okay. I wouldn't want that either. Everybody knowing about how my kidney's functioning, my heart rate, like everything. Day six, and it looks so I mean, far away still. Another bomb. Fire the engines and get them on course. Copy that. Oh, it's frozen. <coughs> the heck? How are you supposed to eat anything? Oh my <coughs> lord. Yes, oh course. my god. We have to fire the engine. Uh, negative on that, Jim. Can't uh, spare power for the computer. Oh, they can't even turn that on. I guess that's the best we can do, Glenn. We're out of time. <sighs> In order to enter the this is just getting insane. <laughs> if the Earth starts drifting down, you need to thrust aft 
not forward. I'll do the same. Poor dude is so sick. You are go for the manual burn. Text plus button at 10 seconds. Mark. Come on, baby. One Nine, more burn. Eight, seven, six, six five, four, three, two, two one. It's the remix to ignition. <laughs> Oh my god, dude. This is just ridiculous. Murphy's Law, man. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Okay, hold it right there. That's it. Back. No, Fred, I'm back. Shit, I'm losing it. 20 seconds. Bring the earth up. Forward, Fred. Come on. I feel like if I was any one of the wives, I would just not keep up to date with any of the news. Oh my god. The music is so chaotic right now. Holy shit. It's so close, but also so far. Let's hope we don't have to do that again. Yeah, I would spend a week just not following the news at all. I would just wait until the very end. Tell me if my husband's alive or not. That's all I need to know. This stress is just too much. Or I'd go on a bender where I'm like <laughs> constantly passed out every night. Now we got to get him in. Tell me about the power up procedures. Apollo 13 Commander Jim Lovell has more time and space, almost 24 days already. 24? Oh, well, I've had an engine flame out a few times in an aircraft and was kind of curious as to whether it was going to... Oh, shit. That That's like but over three weeks. If my cockpit lights hadn't shorted out, there's no way I'd have ever been able to see that. So, uh... No. You, uh, you never know what, what events are going to transpire to get you home. That's true. When one door closes, another opens. Accident prone and just got a ride with the waves. That's good, cool, Fred. I'm okay. I feel so bad for this guy. <laughs> Oh my god. What now? We sure could use the re-entry procedure up here. Yeah, please give it to us. We just can't throw this together at the last minute. So here's what you're gonna do. Here's what you're gonna do. We have an umbilical that provides power from the command module to the limb. It's from the limb batteries before we cut it loose. Why can't we do that? That music. John? I think we got it, buddy. What a relief. They got it. Aquarius, Houston. Yeah, we read you, Ken. Are the flowers blooming in Houston? <laughs> uh, that's a negative, Jim. I don't have the measles. <laughs> By the way. <laughs> Blanche, these nice young men are going to watch the television with you. This is Neil Armstrong <gasps> and this is Buzz. <laughs> Neil and Buzz? Are you boys in the space program too? <laughs> Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> Even I know that. Hey, come on. I guess she has dementia. It's fine. Well, I'm having trouble reading my own writing. I guess a little more tired than I thought. Come on, concentration, mate. Way to go, Jack. So, this man needs to go to a hospital, by the way. He's just like, he's Wait, not okay. Go retro. Flight, we are looking at a typhoon warning. On the edge of the prime recovery. Typhoon warning? What the heck, man? Oh, Jesus. This, this is literally the worst luck from start to finish. One, two, upward thrust. We're loose. Oh, man, that's incredible. The heat shield. The heat will build up. Oh, great. As much as three or four thousand degrees Fahrenheit. That's high. Causing the spacecraft to hit the water, not at a gentle 20 miles per hour, but at a suicidal 300. <sighs> in Rome, Pope Paul led 50,000 people in prayers for the safe return. Oh, that's, that's nice. In Jerusalem, prayers at the Wailing Wall. You okay? He needs... He needs help. He needs a hug. Can you hold out just a little longer? As long as I have to. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so cute. They should have done this ages ago. Why? Why didn't they hug earlier? Hey, let me give you a hand there, Fredo. So close. They have to... They have to survive. They're literally this close. If they don't... That'll just be an actual tragedy that they went through all of that three weeks and then they die because of a typhoon, a potential typhoon. Sorry, Jack, it's an old habit. Kind of used to the pilot seat. <laughs> She's yours to fly. Really? I don't know, man. I don't really trust Jack. This could be the worst disaster NASA's ever experienced. With all due respect, sir, I believe this is going to be our finest hour. Saving three Americans, potentially. Expect entry interface in 45 seconds. And on my mark, your velocity will be 35,200. So close. So close. I'm so worried about the typhoon. It's been a privilege flying with you. Just in case they don't make it out. He's got such 
beautiful blue eyes. Just noticed. Oh my god. Oh my god, how scary. Hey, I, I guess they're warm now. <laughs> Hopefully. We have lost the radio contact. Okay, so they have to wait three minutes. Oh my gosh, these three minutes would be so stressful for the families. Everyone, actually. Everyone's been so invested in saving these three men. Everything's melting. So hot. <sighs> if he makes it out alive, he better never, ever, 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 ever go out into space ever again. Ever! One minute and 30 seconds to end of black. Re-entry. If it doesn't, there'll only be silence. Only you squish Oh. Oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, my heart's racing as well, because I don't know this story. Oh, here we go, here we go. Come on, come on. Do you read? What the heck? Expected to come out of blackout. Oh no. Has come oh God. And gone. Oh God. Heat shield, which was damaged, as you remember, by the explosion three days oh. ago. Well, grandma as, as well, the well, the mother. Come on, come on. Come on, say something, guys. Oh, they're dead, dude, they're dead. They have to be dead. Three minutes and 30, they're dead, dude. F, F in the chat. All of that, all of that for nothing. I can't believe it. That's four minutes. Four minutes? Standing by. Oh, Jesus. Oh, what a waste. What a waste of good life. What a waste of three weeks. Come on, just prove me wrong. Honestly, uh, prove me wrong. Oh, oh. Oh my gosh! Hello, Houston. This is Odyssey. Oh wow! That's amazing! Oh! That's brilliant! What a mission! Oh, people are crying! Oh, they're just relieved. That is amazing. Oh, and Ken too. Odyssey, Houston. Welcome home. What a stressful time for everybody involved. <gasps> wow. Such triumphant music too. I just feel bad that they didn't get to the moon. Like that's really sad, but also they survived. And hey, look, no typhoon. They must be so happy to be on earth. <laughs> it's like your dad's alive, mate. Your, your son, he made it. Oh, so good. They must smell as well. Houston, uh, we're at stable one. The ship is secure. It's Apollo 13 signing off. Oh. <laughs> wow. What a stressful movie. I will never watch this movie ever again. <laughs> it's just so stressful. Oh, what a relief. What an absolute relief. Our mission was called a successful failure and that we returned safely but never made it. To yeah, that's how I would describe it too. It was determined that a damaged coil built inside the oxygen tank sparked during our cryo oh. and caused the explosion that crippled the oxygen. Oh. Fred Hayes was going back to the moon on Apollo 18. Oh. But his mission was canceled because of budget cuts. He never okay. flew in space again. Oh, okay. Nor did Jack Swigert, who left the astronaut corps and was I elected don't, to Congress from the state him. of Colorado. Oh. Ken Mattingly orbited the moon as command module pilot of Apollo 16 oh, wow. and flew the space shuttle, having never gotten the moon. <laughs> And as for me, the seven extraordinary days of Apollo 13 were my last in space. I watched other men walk on the moon and return safely. Yeah, good. All from the confines of mission control yeah. and our house in Houston. I would never do that again to my I family. I sometimes catch myself looking up at the moon, remembering the changes of fortune in our long voyage, thinking of the thousands of people who worked to bring the three of us home. Literally. I look up at the moon and wonder, when will we be going back and who will that be? The end. This is a movie that I would probably not watch again just because of how stressed I was watching it. But at the same time, now that I know that everybody survives and it's all good, I could probably watch it again. It would just take some time. I really like this movie. I thought it was quite different to the normal space movies that I watch because they're very fictional and none of it ever really happened. And some of it just doesn't make any sense at all. But this was really just a historical and scientific movie. It almost felt nonfiction. It was based on true events 
maybe slightly dramatized, but everything seemed pretty accurate, even though I don't know the history behind it. Everything from the math calculations, the wife losing her wedding ring, all the small little details that you would probably say, yes, it's a slow paced movie because of all of those moments. But I think what they were trying to do is portray the accuracy of everything that actually happened in 1970 when Apollo 13 became the most successful fail story ever because at the end of the day the mission completely changed the mission was originally to land on the moon but when that failed the second mission was to get these three men home alive and everything that was going wrong went wrong murphy's law it was just so stressful it was just one thing after another after another and even when it was down to the last three minutes. I could feel my heart beating so fast. I could actually feel it from my chest. And I thought to myself, these men aren't going to survive. Because I, as I said, I don't know the story. This is the first time I'm learning about Jim Lovell and his crewmates. I am so happy that I finally do know the story. As I said, it's not something we learned about in Australian history classes or even talked about amongst each other as kids. It was always like, yeah, we know Neil Armstrong, we know Buzz Aldrin, we know the moon landing story. We know that America was before Russia was the first country to ever land on the moon. That's as far as we know, unless you go out of your way and you, I don't know, try and learn something for yourself outside of the curriculum or you watch this movie as a kid. This movie I hadn't even heard about until recently. So it was very new. Everything was just very new to me, basically, is what I'm trying to get across. I thought it was a breath of fresh air. And I was also very impressed by all of the shots because, yes, it is a film that was released in 1995. So over 25 years ago, but everything looked super realistic too. All the shots were really impressive. The acting as well. Tom Hanks, I love Tom Hanks in everything and anything. He is just outstanding. Kevin Bacon, I've seen him in a few movies, but not a lot. Ed Harris, I've known him in Westworld. I had no idea he was in this film. He played amazing as Gene Kratz. All of the work that it took to bring these men home. You could feel it in the atmosphere. You could feel it in everybody's acting because everybody was genuinely so stressed, genuinely so concerned. The stakes were so incredibly high and you could feel the tension with the music, with the shots, but also just mainly the acting. The acting was perfect. I could feel the stress from these characters and that's how you know they've done a good job. I also liked how at the end, Jim talked about where everybody was because that was my concern. I thought to myself, he better not put his family through that ever again. And I'm so glad that he didn't. And actually all of them didn't really do that ever again, which I don't blame them. I would probably step far away from anything space related had that happened to me because it was quite a traumatic experience. I feel like they all thought they were going to die because the odds were just not in their favor. They were super lucky despite being very unlucky at the same time. They were just cursed from the beginning. It was good to know that it wasn't Jack's fault because I feel like he felt really guilty and he felt like it was his fault, but it was revealed to us what was actually the matter with the ship and that was also good. I think for him, that was really important as well. And I haven't seen a lot of Ron Howard directed films. I think I've seen The Da Vinci Code, but I watched that in the cinemas as a kid and I didn't get it at all. I probably need to watch that again because I've forgotten everything, but I've also watched Solo and that's about it. But I've known of Ron Howard. I feel like he was in Curb Your Enthusiasm and I know that he's Bryce Dallas. Howard's dad, but I haven't really seen a lot of his work. I thought he did a really good job directing this and making it as accurate as possible. The story is very intriguing. It is literally a miracle, such a great win in American history to have been able to save these men when the situation was just so dire and everything was just going against them all both in the ship and outside of the ship. Everything was just so impressive. I enjoy this movie, guys, but I probably would never watch it again. Let me know what you thought of this film in the comment section below. Do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It really does help my channel out. The uncut version is over on Patreon. The link for that is in the description bar and in the pinned comments below. You just need a copy of the film so that you can watch it along with me. There'll be a timer 
and you can watch me on one screen and the movie can be on another screen. It'll be a lot of fun. Down below in the description bar in the pinned comments, you can also find all my social media handles, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, Discord, TikTok, Facebook, and my two other channels, my gaming channel, my blog channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone. Yeah.